Hey guys, welcome back. I'm MTG Nerd Girl, and today we're going to talk about the best event on MTG Arena. The Arena Decathlon is an 11 event series that takes place from the 1st of January to the 21st. This season is split between 10 decathlon events and the decathlon final. In this video, we're going to take a look at all of the different events and prize support that you guys can get. We're also going to check out some of the gameplay. But first, let's go ahead and start with the 10 different events that you need to enter in order to qualify for the final. So each event is four days long and they come in pairs of two. So you end up with five different event periods where you guys can enter into these events and acquire the decathlon tokens. Before we take a look at the finals or any of the prize support, let's go ahead and look at the different formats that are available in these events. For week one, we've got Popper and Jump In. Popper is pretty straightforward, but Jump In is one of the jumpstart mechanics. So it acts a lot like Limited, where you take two random different themed decks and you smash them together and you get to play as is, which is really fun. Moving on to event three and four, the second wave of the Decathlon that starts on January 4th. We have Mixed Dominaria Sealed, which is going to come with packs of the original Dominaria, Dominaria United, and Brothers War. So it should be a brand new format that you guys have never experienced. Event number four is going to shake up a format that you guys are used to, and it's going to change standard to give you guys on your upkeep one treasure, clue, or food token. Again, just to sort of shake up the format and make it something very unique and fun to play. Event number five is going to be a traditional Brothers War player draft. So you'll be sitting at a table with real players and you actually go best of three in this format. Event number six is going to be straightforward alchemy. And then moving on to the fourth wave of events that start on the 10th of January, we have a Kamigawa Neon Dynasty bot draft where you guys will be playing against AI while drafting the deck and going best of one. And moving on to event number eight, we have Traditional Explorer, again, a best of three format. And finally, that takes us to the final wave of qualifying decathlon events, number nine and 10. For event number nine, we have an Omniscience Draft where you guys can draft cards from all across Magic Arena's history, and you get to play in a fun and funky way because there is no mana cost. So if you're a fan of large spells, this is going to be the format for you. And the final event, number 10, is going to be a block constructed where we're going to be playing Streets of New Capenna, Dominaria, and Brothers War to create a three set standard. And that's it. That's all 10 of the qualifying events. But before we move on to the prize structure and the finals, I want to make sure that you guys know that each event does have its own unique token. This means when entering into the finals, when you try to get a certain number of these decathlon tokens, you're unable to enter the same event multiple times and get multiple tokens. So if you are trying to get max rewards out of this, you do need all 10 individual tokens, which I actually think is part of the reason I find this format so fun, because I feel like I'm really earning and working towards something, even when I'm playing an event that I don't normally focus on or I don't find particularly enjoyable, attaining that token gives me a sense of accomplishment and makes the format super fun. It also sort of gets you out of your wheelhouse and gets you playing things you wouldn't normally do. Now that we've looked at all the different events, let's go ahead and talk about some of the prize support. So if you enter into any decathlon event, even if you don't win it, you are going to be getting one of these bronze sundering titan sleeves. I love the art. It's one of the schematics uh, that came out in Brothers War, and I think that this is absolutely awesome. So even if you're not able to play in a lot of these events or have no intention in playing in the decathlon finals, it could be worth it to just enter one because you get this sleeve automatically. Now, if you do manage to get one of the max wins tokens for every single one of those 10 events, you will also be getting not only this Sundering Titan sleeve, but one of the bonus golden ones as well. And I can tell you from experience, getting every single token from all of those different formats is no small feat. Next, let's go ahead and talk about the ways that you can actually get max wins in these events and what other prize support can be offered in the individual event. The prize support is different depending on whether the format is best of one or best of three, but it does remain consistent within those formats. The entry to all of these events, no matter the format, is either 2,000 gold or 400 gems, which is roughly two packs worth of value. So you can take a look at the prize structure here and see at the three to four mark win on best of one, you break even, everything else is profit. Or the best of three, where you need to hit two to three wins in order to break even, everything else again is profit. Now keep in mind there is a hidden bonus worth of value as well because once you've acquired three decathlon tokens you will be getting a free entry into the finals which is chock full of prize support as well. 
As you'll notice, a lot of the prize support is in packs, but what kind of packs are they? They have a 40% chance to be a standard premiere set, 40% chance to be a non-standard premiere set, but you also have a 10% chance to get alchemy or a 10% chance to get one of the mythic packs, which is guaranteed to have a mythic and is just a lot better value. So aside from the decathlon being a super fun event where you guys can earn access to a bunch of prize support in the decathlon finals, this is also a great way for you guys to grind up extra packs uh, for your collection if you guys are working on that as well. Now that all the preliminary events are over for the decathlon, let's go ahead and jump into the finals. You will need three of those unique decathlon tokens to get one entry into the finals, or you guys can get seven of those unique tokens to get two entries. There's also a bonus if you manage to get all 10 of those tokens, you get the gold sundering titan sleeve that we talked about earlier. You'll also get an additional 10 play-in points, which is half the entry that you'll need to get into a play-in qualifier. If you manage to snag the minimum three tokens required to enter into the decathlon finals, you'll automatically get one of the silver titan sleeves for entering. Um, now this means that you'll get the bronze titan just for signing up for any of the preliminary events, You'll get the Silver Sundering Titan for qualifying for a final, and you get that Gold Sundering Titan for getting all 10 of those Decathlon tokens. So three sleeves total available for you guys. Lastly, let's go ahead and jump into the Decathlon Finals. So this is a best of three Phantom Duplicate Sealed. So you won't get to keep any of the cards because it's a Phantom event. And because it's a duplicate seal, it means every single entry is going to be getting the exact same copy of its card pool. Because it's a Phantom event, I expect this pool to be chock full of goodies, bombs, haymakers, you name it. It also suggests that the card pool might be larger than normal because it does specify that there will be many different decks that you can build in this pool. So I imagine there will be a ton of different variations, but it'll be super interesting and unique. And this is the first time we've seen this format on Arena. Now let's go ahead and move on to the prize support. Now remember, you can earn multiple entries into this finals, you can earn up to two. So it does give you two chances to win a lot of these things and some of the rewards you can actually win multiple times. So at zero wins, taking a look here at the bottom of our uh, prize pool sheet, it says you get no reward, but remember you get that silver sundering titan sleeve for earning entry into the event. So I would kind of consider that a zero win reward. Moving on, if you end up getting one win in your event, you are gonna be qualifying to get all of these wonderful showcase lands from Corset 2021. Moving on up, if we get two wins, you'll get the lands. You also get four draft tokens, which is a pretty hefty chunk of value. That works out to be 6,000 gems if you guys are into drafting. And it's a great way to also build your collection with the new set coming out. You'll also be getting an exclusive cosmetic at two wins. You'll be getting the Phage the Untouchable Avatar, which is pretty sweet and a great way to show that you've participated in these events. Up next, we have three wins. You get all of the rewards we've already talked about, but you also get four rare and four mythic wild cards. This is a pretty hefty chunk of value as well. You guys might have noticed that you guys can buy wild cards in the store now. So if you compare that dollar value wise, this is a pretty good chunk of change to be added to your account. And finally, the biggest reward of them all, where you guys will be getting all of those rewards that we've already talked about, but you'll also be getting one of every single card from the new set. So this means when Phyrexia All Will Be One comes out, you guys will be awarded a huge bundle that will include all of those cards and really help out your collection. Now, I know this was a ton of information and I expect you guys to have some questions. So make sure you guys leave any questions for me down below in the comments. I'll make sure I check them over the next two weeks and answer them as soon as I can. But before we end this video, I thought it would be really fun to take you guys into my first decathlon event. All right, here we are in event number one of the decathlon where we take two different themed decks, smash them together and to create one full deck. So our options for our first pick is Wolfpack, Training and Graveyard. I think Wolfpack and Graveyard are both very like synergy specific decks where if your other deck doesn't line up real well, then you might not be able to pull off anything too good, but I think training kind of pairs well with everything. So we're gonna try that for our first one. So let's keep that going. Now we've got cultists, modified and sneaky. Hmm, well sneak doesn't work real well with training because you wanna be getting tokens onto your creatures and building them up over time, which when you pull them back with the ninjutsu abilities, not probably super great. Um, so let's go ahead and go with modified because creatures that have trained are indeed modified, which should synergize really well. So let's see if we can get a good deck here and, uh, and get a game in. 
This is my honest first event. I have not done any of these off stream. So um, we're gonna just take a look together and see how these things sort of paired up with each other. All right, so taking a look really quickly at the deck, it does seem very Boros, very low to the ground, very aggressive. You can see a lot of two drops here. We've got some okay removal and just a ton of like counters and super aggressive stuff. So let's see how the deck plays out. Well, we don't have any red mana, but I think I'm kind of okay with that. We have our one mythic plus a two drop. Everything in our hand is white. So we probably don't have to stress too much about not having the red mana. I should probably move me a little over here. Uh, we can go ahead and play the mask as well. It doesn't equip when it comes into play. Hey, look at that. We got the land we need for the uh, survivor as well. I'm a little worried about removal or a counter spell, but you know, that's okay. I think we're gonna play out our card anyway, see how it goes. Okay, looks like it resolves. Glad to see it. Fingers crossed. The savior is quite good. And it looks like he's not gonna make it, but that's okay. Uh, they might be hurting for land. They are scrying one to the bottom and taking their entire turn to do so, playing a tapped land. Okay. Not a lot we can do here, so we'll just go ahead and equip, make our creature bigger, and we'll call it a day. If we get another land, we have a nice little attack on uh, with a 4-4, but starting to run a little light on cards. Hmm, I wonder if this will be a pump spell. I don't think the vision, the hold for ransom is quite worth it. So I'm just gonna hold open for a Valorous dance. Maybe we could ransom a bunch of stuff. The following turn. No blocks, my friend. What big bad creature do you have for me? Okay, is this, this is toughness greater. Oh, hmm, that's a problem that this does say toughness. Hmm. Okay, well, a big dragon's gonna come into play and kill our citizen here, which is not good, not good at all. Oh no, so many dragons. Oh, that's a big one. Yep. That is a very, very large dragon. I am concerned. And we know they've got this 3-3 in hand as well. Wow, their deck has some big creatures. Youch. Toughness four or greater. At least we can kill their big big baddie. But I mean, eeh, we're still in a lot of trouble. Four, five, six. We can actually kill this with an untapped land. We did not find. And we should have to hope that they don't have any more dragons. Right? Fingers crossed no dragons. Okay, the Abraid. We still have enough to play the Olenbach, so we'll go here, 
play the Olenbach Escort. We need to get rid of the chant creature can't attack or block. Oh, that thing copies stuff? Oh boy, we are in so much trouble. They're out of cards though, and they can also spend the mana to like bring that stuff back. Oh no. I'm gonna try to use the silversmith to do a thing to bring back or to, to make the cavalry bigger. I don't know. Okay. Well, if we use the Kami Flare. Target creature you control, they plus one, plus one counter, no blocks. We're in trouble. Okay, so I can't equip this because I think they're going to crack this and then just go in. Hopefully that's what they do. and We can kill the replication specialist. Oh no, don't say you top decked something good. Come on. Okay. You got it. So two blocks, we're gonna kill this. I'm gonna go here. And I'm gonna give this thing lifelink and indestructible. And we actually go to four and we have lethal on the crack back. Oh my goodness. There's no way. Oh my goodness. There's no. <laughs> Oof. Oh man. Okay. That was, that was an intense game. Uh, and I'm very, very glad that we got there. One game down six to go. All right. I think that's everything you guys need to know about the arena decathlon. Make sure you leave me a comment down below with what you guys think of the event as a whole. I would love to hear your thoughts. And if you have any questions, don't forget, you can leave a comment as well. I'll be checking those regularly and get back to you guys as soon as I can. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.